All right, guys, we have made it to the end of the year and we are having the SOL today. So if you weren't pulled for a power up session, you're going to be here watching this video with me. So I'm Mr. Arson, by the way, in case uh, I'm not your teacher and let's go through this. So we're going to review a couple topics. We're going to try and go through it pretty quickly. Um, what I would encourage you to do is I would wait, um, maybe pause the video, solve the problem on your own. For the length of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and instead of pausing awkwardly for like 30 seconds for you to solve it, um, I'm going to leave the pausing up to you. So I'm just going to work through each problem. And if you want to pause it, try the problem and then check yourself. That's what I would encourage. But if not, just watching through is better than nothing. So let's look at this first one. What is the inverse of the statement? If you try, then you will pass. So we want to look for keywords, and one of our keywords here is inverse, right? So I get think through my words, and I say, okay, converse is switch, inverse is not, and then contrapositive is both. So I'm my keyword here is not, okay? And I'm gonna my handwriting's awful. So instead of if you try, we want if you don't try, okay? So I'm going to throw that don't in here. And if I look through my options, that's going to make my options pretty obvious. Um, if you pass, it's not what I'm looking for. If you pass, if you fail, if you don't try, okay, then you won't pass. Perfect. Okay. And again, as a reminder in your SOL, a lot of people don't pass because they give up. So we encourage you keep on trying. So let's look at another problem. All right, if P stands for I go swimming and Q stands for it is summer, what symbolic format, uh, what is the symbolic format for? If it is not summer, then I won't go swimming. So we look at this and we say, okay, summer, is that my P statement or my Q statement? I said, okay, let's look. It's my Q statement, right? And then I won't go swimming. Swimming is my P statement. Now, that gets me my Q first, then my P. So I can cross out A and I can cross out C. But what does a squiggly mean? Let's think back what that little squiggly mark means. Remember that squiggly mark means not. Okay. So let's take a look. If I go swimming, if I, um, or it is summer, it is not summer. So this is my not Q. I won't go swimming. This is my not P. And there you go. This is going to be letter D. Okay. All right. So that's your conditional statements. You're going to see that stuff really early. Something else you're going to see really early in the SOL is going to be your parallel lines. So here's a real basic uh, problem. Remember, when we see these little arrows, that means that we're talking about two sets of parallel lines. So Let's take a look. I'm looking for X, right? So remember with parallel lines, we have two options. Either the lines are, are either the angles are equal or the angles add up to 180. So let's take a look. Do these angles look equal to each other? I, I think they do. Okay. This one over here, see how open this one is. This would be an obtuse angle. These are both acute. So my answer here is 47. Now, remember, if you get stuck on a question like this and you can't remember what to do, at the very least, look and say, is it more than 90 or less than 90? Well, this looks less than 90, so we could even automatically cross these guys out to start. All right, let's try another parallel lines one here. Which ones would prove M parallel to N? So in this case, we don't know that these are parallel. We need to prove it. So we're looking for two things to happen. We want something that is true. And we want something that is helpful. So let's look through. Angle one congruent to angle four. Is that true? Well, yeah, these are vertical angles, right? But does that help us? Well, it doesn't tell us anything about line N, so that's no good. Angle three is congruent to angle five. Well, is that true? No, that's not true either. Those are supplementary, right? They add up to 180. Okay, let's look at another one. Four adds up to plus seven, adds up to 180. Well, this one's acute, that one's obtuse. Yeah, that checks out. So it's true, is it helpful? Well, let's take a look. One's on M, right? Four's on M, seven's on N, so it's true and it's helpful. So my answer here is C. All right, 
let's keep going on. All right. Oh, this is another type of triangle problem. So you'll see these triangle problems somewhere in the middle of your SOL. Order the sides from least to greatest. So while I'm looking at this problem, the first thing I notice is that I have two angles and I need to find the third angle that I'm missing right here, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 180 degrees and I'm just gonna go ahead and subtract out minus 66, minus 52, Okay, and if I subtract that out, I believe we get somewhere around the realm of 62. Okay, and so this angle is 62. Now that I have that, I can go ahead and solve. Remember, I'm going least to greatest. Make sure we're keeping track of our words. So I'm gonna take my smallest angle and I'm gonna go opposite my smallest angle and I'm on side E, F as my first option. So E, F. So if I'm looking at my answers, it's not this one, and it's not this one. It's one of these two, right? Then I'm going to take my middle angle here. I'm going to go opposite to this side, and I'm looking at side F, G. So F, G should be my second one. So that's, again, going to give me answer option C. All right. So here's another one that's kind of funky. If two sides of a triangle are 31 and 47, which could be a third side? So I've got sides of a triangle. I'm looking for the third side. Things we should think about is, is it a right triangle? If it's a right triangle, then we do A squared, B squared, C squared, right? But this doesn't say, I'm looking at my keywords. I'm not looking, I'm not seeing anything about right triangles. So I'm thinking that I'm looking for just any triangle. So if I think back, I remember that the two smallest sides have to add up to be bigger than the biggest side. Or what I actually, I can do is 47 minus 31 on one side, I subtract on one side, I get 16. And before you jump and say, oh, 16, I found it. There's the answer, wait, hang on. Let's look at the next option, 47 plus 31. And we end up here at 78. And remember, our third side needs to be somewhere in between in between 16 and 78. And so I look through my answer options and I say, is that between 16 and 78 right here? No. Is that between 16 and 78? No. This one again, actually turns out to be C. We got to see a couple times in a row here. Um, 41 is the only one that lands in between and 100 is way too big on the other side. Okay. So let's look at our next problem. All right, if the ratio between the radii is three to five, what is the volume ratio? So if you've been filling out your charts, you'll recognize this as an S, A, V problem. You wanna save yourself on the SOL, save yourself. Okay, and remember our ratio here is A to B, okay? Our area ratio is A squared, B squared. And my volume ratio is A cubed, B cubed. Now I need to be careful, which ratio did they give me? Well, they gave me something with radii. What does that word sound like? It sounds like radius, and that would be a sign measure. Okay, remember radii just means radius, but it's plural, so more than one radius. Okay, and we wanna to get to the volume ratio. So keep track, are you going to area, or are you going to volume? So I'm going all the way down to volume, so what do I do? Well, I cube it, right? So I'm doing three cubed and I'm doing five cubed. And I end up at 27 to 125. Okay, if you plug that straight into your calculator, okay, the math button will get you to the cubed. Um, I think it's math three gets you your cube button and that's three cubed is 27, five cubed is 125. All right, let's look at one more salve problem or say one we want to save yourself the ratio between the area is 64 to 729 what is the side ratio again we're going to set up sav here 
and we're going to fill in the one I know. So which, before you just go ahead and plug it in for side, take a quick look. The ratio between the area, okay, is 64 to 729. That's a big ratio there. It's all right. You can, you, you can still figure out what is the side ratio. So we're going backwards this time. So instead of squaring it, we're going to take the square root. So the square root of 64, well that turns out to be 8. And the square root of 729, thankfully turns out to 27. And so my answer here is D, it's 8 to 27. All right, here's a circle problem. So we've got an angle here, 52. We're looking for X. Um, this is the center of my circle right here. Okay, they just tell me to solve for X. Now, before I do anything, let's knock out some bad options here. So the first question we should ask ourselves is, is it bigger than or less than 90? Well, that angle looks a good bit bigger than 90 degrees, so I'm gonna take out 52. I don't think it's an acute angle. And then, it's still less than 180, right? Because 180 would be a straight line. So I think we can feel pretty good about taking out 308. So we really only have two options here. So again, if you get stuck on the SOL, don't just guess C because you like the letter C. Take your time. Make an answer that makes sense, okay? If you can narrow it down to two, well, you only have to get half the questions right, right? So narrow it down to two, and then just take your best guess from there if you're not sure how to solve it. But let's talk about how we actually solve this. This angle, if you remember, that's in the center is called a central angle. This angle on the edge here is called an inscribed angle, okay? So remember, with an inscribed angle, it's equal to half the arc, or if you want to think about it, as we're going out of the angle, notice we're getting bigger, right? Here's my lines are getting bigger. We're going to double it. So we're going to go 52 times 2, and that gets us to 1. Oh, four. And there you go. Okay, if we're going the other direction, if we were headed this way instead, we would divide it by two. All right, here's, here's a fun one. We've got what is the equation of this circle? So you're going to want to use your formula sheet on this one, right? Anytime you see equation of a circle or you see circles on graphs, you want to flip your formula sheet over and look at your H and K thing. And here's your formula, X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared, right? So I need to find my center. My center is the H and K. So my center is at negative 2, 1, right? And my radius is 3. So all I'm going to do is plug in negative 2 in here and plug in 1 right there. And my equation is x minus a negative 2 or x plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 3 squared. Or you could put it as 9. Either one will work. But you want this form right here. Let's do one. Let's just talk about this one. We won't actually solve this one. Which of these points lie on the circle? So you want to be careful. Look at your keywords. Which of these points lie on the circle? We're not asking for the center of the circle. Sometimes people want to take this one real fast and plug in answers. Oh, it's 3, 2. It's 3, 2. Well, that's the center, or 3, negative 2. That's the center of your circle. What you really want to do is you actually want to take these guys and plug each one in. Okay? Um, and then C, does it equal 25? You say, okay, I'm going to plug him in. Does it equal 25? We don't have time to do all of that here. You're welcome to do that on your own. Um, the correct answer is, let me make sure I get this right, I believe is, is C here, okay? Negative, this would be negative 4 squared, that would be positive 3 squared. If you're plugging this in and it's not working, you probably forgot your parentheses um, around before you squared it. All right, we're looking at two last types of problems. We've got two problems left, and I'll let you guys go and, and get ready for your SOL. 
All right, first one, we want to find the arc length. Now, this is one of those formulas that you just kind of have to remember. On your formula sheet, remember, we're, we're looking for a um, length, right? So that's like circumference. So we know from our formula sheet that circumference is 2 pi r, but we're not looking for the whole circumference. We're just looking for part of it. So the part you have to remember is how much of the circle am I dealing with, and that's angle over 360. So my radius is 5, right? And then my angle here, I need to figure out what is this angle here. So I know that halfway around my circle is a 180. So I'm just going to go 180 minus 35, and I'll see what's left over. And that comes out to 145 degrees, right? And so I'm just going to plug that in, 145 all over 360. All right. And let's see if I can do some quick mental math here. Um, yeah, that's not going to happen. So let me just plug it in to my handy-dandy calculator, and we will see what that comes out to just to make sure that you get the right thing. So that's going to come out to 145 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times 5 and you're gonna get something like I don't know 12.6 maybe 12.7 if you use the actual pi um, and that seems about right if this section here is 5 the section from right here all the way to here yeah that's that's a little more than double of 5 that checks out all right last problem Let's take a look and find the area, the sector area. So the only difference here is we're doing pi r squared instead of 2 pi r. We're still going to do angle over 360. Again, that's the part you need to remember. If you need to, write it down right at the beginning of the SOL once you finish your formulas. Okay. And so we're going to do 70 over 360 times pi times 12 squared. Now remember, on questions like this, if you're not getting the right answer, it might be because the answer is in terms of pi. Um, make sure that if you need to, that you, you multiply all the answers with pi to make sure that you, you find the one. Don't give up if, it, if you don't at first see your answer. So again, let's multiply this together, and we get something like 87.9, maybe 88 if you use your, uh, again, use the actual pi button, 87.9. All right, so that's all the time we have for review. Let's just talk about three quick things. You want to remember three things walking into the SOL. First thing, as soon as you get in, go ahead and switch your calculator into degree mode. If you have it in radian mode, you're going to get every single trig problem wrong, and you're going to sit there frustrated about how you didn't get the right answers, okay? So switch it into degree mode. Second, all right, um, those of you that are in my class, we've talked about the four different formulas. Go ahead, write those four formulas down so that you have them, and then actually look at them during the test that, to help you solve problems. And finally, the last one that we haven't really covered a ton, but might be worth writing down, is right at the beginning of the SOL, just writing down angle over 360 for arc length and sector area problems. You guys are going to be fantastic. We've been working all year towards this, so you don't want to waste your chance at getting past the first time by giving up partway through. I know it's a long test. I know it can be really tiring, but trust me, you'd much rather not get a retake and have to do, take the entire test again to try and pass it. You'd rather just pass it the first time. So work hard. Don't give up. You need to get 30 questions right, so make sure you're keeping track, doing the easy problems. Don't let the hard ones get too discouraging, okay? You guys are going to be fantastic, and good luck.